Jae-in has kept a close eye on the ASEAN region since the early days of his presidency. 한국은 신남방 정책의 비전과 성과가 아세안과 한국 모두에게 도움이 되고 있다고 평가하며 신남방 정책 플러스 전략을 마련했습니다. 코로나로 인한 피해 규모는 나라마다 다르고 치료제와 백신이 개발되어 모든 나라에 보급될 때까지는 어느 나라도 안심할 수 없는 상황입니다. 신남방 정책 플러스 전략은 포괄적 보건의료 협력을 비롯한 실제 백신 협력 분야를 중심으로 새롭고 실천 가능한 방안이 담겨 있습니다. The new Southern Policy Plus. Let's talk about it. Today we're joined by Vice Foreign Minister of South Korea Choi jung gun here at the Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs here in Seoul. Hello there, uh, Vice Foreign Minister. Thank you so much for inviting us to the Foreign Affairs uh, building here. Thank you for having me here. What an honor. President Moon Jae-in um, late last year announced uh, the uh, new Southern Policy mm. Plus three years after declaring mm. or announcing the initial new Southern Policy. Uh, what are some key factors that differentiate this new Southern Policy Plus from mm. the initial policy? I mean, in order to understand new Southern Policy Plus, obviously we need to revisit what it means to be engaging with our neighbors in ASEAN continent. Basically, uh, ever since we got into power back in 2017, we review a lot of uh, uh, regions that we should be able to engage in with much more political commitment. Obviously, ASEAN has to come to our mind uh, as one of the very top neighbors that we must be able to uh, uh, engage much better than and much deeper than last administration. Why ASEAN to begin with is basically our close neighbors and also potential area where we can share a lot of things together beyond commercial and economic interest. And at the end of the day, we wanted to be able to share a lot of know-hows that we have with this potentially very great uh, 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 region that we should grow together. When we attach plus, that would mean that expandability. Uh, we wanted to bolster a sense of community with our friends in ASEAN uh, nations, and plus India, of course. Uh, so ASEAN uh, uh, itself bring us a lot of opportunities because we have great regionalization, meaning that we have great network with people there, market, and, and also companies and, and, and things like that. Also, we have great culture exchange already there. So as you see in, in the streets of Seoul, you see a lot of uh, ASEAN uh, uh, footprints, I should say, restaurants, people, and tourism, and, and all these uh, great uh, assets that we enjoy. So we wanted to put them in a whole package and then present our people in ASEAN state, say, hey, this is our, uh, 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 our uh, policy stance, and let's enjoy this together. So ASEAN, uh, 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 New Southern Policy Plus itself is our honest and also a very uh, bold initiative to bolster our sense of community beyond Northeast Asian theater mm -hmm. so that we have a virtually good sense of communitarianism uh, throughout ASEAN and thereby contributing to the uh, uh, more solidarity and cooperation. And since you are going through this pandemic, and it itself requires great uh, uh, communitarianism and need for more solidarity. So ASEAN uh, uh, are very much, we are a good friend. So with uh, NSP, uh, we want to build up throughout seven pillars. One of them is basically uh, education, uh, future business, and also uh, uh, health. These are the, one of the three of the seven things that we want to really emphasize so that uh, we come with a very, very simple axiom being that no one is safe until everybody is safe. So with that, we want to prepare post-corona-19 era together. So NSP itself is essentially togetherness, mm -hmm. I should say.
unity, if you will. Um, President Moon Jae-in, um, even from the early onset of his administration, mm. has really emphasized and put a key focus on the ASEAN region mm. um, and emphasized the importance of South Korea diversifying mm. its uh, economic and strategic mm. portfolios. Why, why would you say it's so important for South Korea to do this? Uh, because, uh, as I said, we live together and we should go through this very hardship together. And obviously, peace and uh, security in the Korean Peninsula doesn't just happen by any chance. We need to have communitarian cooperation throughout the region so that uh, uh, with that peace and stability, we should be able to grow together. We should be able to prepare for the post-Corona-19 era together. And at the, at, at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, we want to be cosmopolitan together. How has the COVID-19 pandemic impacted South Korea in translating, carrying out this mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. NSP plus, if you will? And obviously, as we all know, we ourselves are also going through and suffering from this uh, lingering COVID-19 much longer than we expected. Mm -hmm. And Republic of Korea has been known for its success in managing and handling COVID-19. And in the general mindset of our government is that it doesn't really matter who gets the vaccine first. What really matters is that, is that we have to finish this pandemic together. Right. So uh, what we have been doing is that through our uh, ODA, Official Development Aid Fund, and with also channels through uh, uh, each capital of ASEAN state, we've been sharing our know-how in handling and, and fighting COVID-19. And also we've been providing uh, 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 what we see as the best amount of, of, of mask and, and, and PCR kits and things like that. And also securing social stability in each ASEAN nation, which are going through much more difficult situation than we do, helping them at, in their hardship also secures much strong trusteeship between South Korea and each of ASEAN nations. So what we have been doing is that, as I told you, with the mentality of no one is safe until everybody's safe, we've been really engaging very actively with each and every uh, uh, ASEAN nation. Of course, for South Korea, it's not only the ASEAN region, mm. it's the rest of the world. Exactly, as, yeah. um, as pointed out by President Moon Jae-in during mm. the World Economic mm. Forum keynote address. Mm. Um, now, of course, for South Korea, the, um, it's not only the ASEAN member nations, but this NSP, uh, would you say it's designed to better align with uh, the new incoming administration in Washington and mm. their pivot to Asia, their Indo-Pacific mm. strategy as well? Uh, that's a very good question, something that we've been always pondering, wondering ourselves. Uh, the United States has been calling their engagement with ASEAN states uh, in the Pacific strategy. But what we see is that we have been engaging ASEAN nation anyway with a very strong economic and commercial, commercial interest. But this administration is rather different than previous and other states in a sense that We've been doing with a sense of uh, uh, people-centered community and peace and uh, prosperity. What I mean is that uh, they might call it our own version of Indo-Pacific strategy, but we name it uh, a New Southern Policy Plus because it gets much more substantial stories and contents behind it. As I told you, mm -hmm. beyond commercial and economic interests, we really wanted to build a very strong foundation for a pan East Asia uh, communitarianism. So uh, unlike other nations with very similar policy platform, we've been approaching each ASEAN nation from what I say is a bottom up and top down uh, process together with a very uh, strong political commitment from a very top leadership in this government. Uh, we've been engaging uh, each of a uh, uh, leadership in each ASEAN state at the same time, we've been encouraging people to people, company to company, and market exchange so that we get very strong link up with uh, uh, ASEAN states. So we, I believe, uh, we are very proud to say that we are very substantial. We are uh, much more mind approaching to ASEAN nation. And, at the, and also, we are very sustainable. So depending, it, it, it doesn't really depend on who sits in the 
Blue House, mm -hmm. I think this policy will become much more uh, sustainable with strong momentum. Right, the people-to-people -people, um, mm. exchanges, yeah. because that had been already going on yeah. between the peoples mm. of the different countries, uh, between South Korea and the mm. ASEAN. Um, however, in November 2019, uh, mm. South Korea and the U.S. released a joint fact sheet, mm. actually, titled Working Together to Promote Cooperation Between mm. the NSP and the Indo-Pacific yeah. Strategy. Uh, the two countries identified mm. different areas where the two countries mm. could actually uh, promote prosperity. Mm. On the socio and economic fronts, there were many convergences, mm. whereas uh, strategic, especially mm. um, security fronts, mm. they are lacked. Would you say that the NSP Plus has uh, expanded to cover more fronts? Well, that's something that we have to uh, carefully take a look at it. But what I want to say is this, as you just mentioned, we, we had uh, for the first time uh, published joint fact sheet with a State Department of the United States, right? What does that mean? First of all, our staff and people in ASEAN Bureau have become much more busy. <laughs> They've been very popular in a sense that a lot of people from other nations like Australia, United States, or even European Union front, they've been approaching us and basically asking, how come you are so successful? So what we are saying is this, I mean, in approaching ASEAN states, you should be able to approach them with very strong blueprints for why and, why, why and how uh, their and our approach is very much mutually beneficial. We shouldn't be looking at ASEAN nation just for the bank of marketability or bank of market uh, benefit. It's about people-to-people -people exchange, thereby laying very rock, solid, uh, sustainable foundation. Uh, we, need, we need to be able to buy and, and look at their mindset first. And ov obviously, ASEAN states have their own security concern, but unless you talk to and, and, and get into the mindset of each ASEAN nation, then security cooperation becomes nothing but I have to say, very superficial. So that, uh, uh, that's why we've been very much able to cooperate with and also listen to their uh, security concerns too. So uh, I think that's something that we have to take a look at it. But what we are trying to focus on is, as I said, the seven pillars that I just mentioned from the NSP uh, profile. And, that, and then you know, we'll go from there. Right, so and there's the peace pillar there as well. Of course, but peace has to be, uh, 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 I mean, peace itself is defined in various ways, obviously. Uh, ASEAN, uh, uh, their security concern is not from continent, if you will. It's much more maritime security concern. Also, uh, 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 non-traditional security concern obviously pandemic, terrorism, cyber, all things like that. We've been cooperating with, him, with them on that area as well. So security has to be very broadly redefined within the theater of ASEAN uh, nations as well. Now, I want to shift gears to the economy a little mm. bit. Um, South Korea joined the 14 other Asia-Pacific economies to form the RCEP mm. late last year. Mm. Um, how do you forecast RCEP to shape the future of South Korea's trade with mm. uh, this region and the Asia-Pacific? Um, how do you expect uh, <coughs> India not joining RCEP mm. to, um, to impact this, mm. uh, this trade mm. relations with this region? Okay, uh, we got to talk about RCEP first. What does RCEP stand for? In other words, a lot of people outside of ASEAN, especially from European and an American intellectual society, they are looking at ASEAN and basically they sort of dubbed it as talk show. In other words, they gather together, and they have a great meeting, but nothing substantial. Mm -hmm. But RCEP is a very iconic and also substantial arrangement where finally this region has become uh, one free trade market. I mean, we have some uh, uh, different levels of, of, of free trade, but at the end of the day, this region all came down to one conclusion that with very stable and codified uh, uh, arrangements in trade, we are able to go from here and move forward. 
that means that this will become a big uh, communitarian market where with a very different uh, uh, comparative advantage uh, each nation will become very uh, 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 um, complementary to each other. So ALSEP, now we have an institutional arrangement and also one caveat is this, we have uh, through this RCEP, we also have a free trading arrangement with our neighboring states to Japan mm -hmm. and, and China as well. We have free trade agreement with China, obviously, but with wow. RCEP, it got a lot richer mm -hmm. and it got a lot deeper. And with India, I'm sure uh, India has its own economic concern too, but with, if RCEP gets much more successful, substantial, and uh, India will have a second thought joining and I'm sure they will join uh, uh, in our SEP system too. I, I want to ask about CPTPP. Oh. How will that change the landscape? And uh -huh. uh, South Korea, President Moon Jae-in has said mm. many a times mm. that he, South Korea is considering joining that. I mean, as many people in the world see South Korea and basically they see, uh, see as the most uh, uh, free trade and multilateral arrangement friendly nation in Asia. We already have, uh, I, I already give up counting how many free trade agreements with the rest of the world. We are the uh, perhaps the only uh, nation in Northeast Asia that has free trade agreement with the United States, European Union, ASEAN as a whole. So, and looking at CPTPP, I mean, basically why not giving it a, a positive overview and review. Uh, uh, basically, we have to also concert and, and talk with our friends in Washington since they are new in town. So basically, uh, my, my uh, stance is that we are very much positive about uh, uh, CPTPP. Uh, so we'll, we'll see what's going to happen. Also laid out in the um, initial NSP and mm -hmm. as well as mm -hmm. the PLUS um, are the uh, key strengths of the PLUS in cooperation are the future mm. industries, if you will, 5G, AI, mm. big data, and IoT. Uh, give us a layout of the, uh, the strengths that PLUS has, NSP PLUS has. I think this year will be the beginning of the end of COVID-19. That doesn't necessarily mean that we'll be totally for, free from another pandemic. Uh, who knows what's going to happen? God forbid it happens again. Yet, uh, so regional cooperation has to be rather different than, say, the previous one, mm -hmm. centering on economic and commercial interest. Because unless our partners are safe, we're not safe. If this goes on forever, then we have to lock ourselves in, which is not good for everybody. So plus essentially, essentially means uh, uh, expandability, uh, but also it means togetherness. In other words, we need to be able to prepare for uh, uh, post-COVID-19 era by strengthening our interconnection, not only uh, people-to-people exchange, government-to-government -government ex uh, 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 co-work, and also market has to be converged. And with different comparative advantage and different situation, each capital of each nation, I think uh, uh, this NSP itself will bring to each nation a great platform so that we can join in. And I don't want to say NSP should be only Korea's initiative. It's, it's ASEAN's total initiative. That's something that uh, uh, in Busan two years ago, the leaders of the ASEAN uh, uh, agreed to it because we need to be able to grow together. So we're not saying the NSP is the most perfect uh, policy initiatives was something that we can grow together. Grow together. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to keep coming back to this, but <laughs> is it really, um, does it converge with free and open mm -hmm. Indo-Pacific? Uh, basically. Because it hits on uh, many common points. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's why our policy is based upon openness as well. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to be any, uh, uh, we're not trying to be exclusive about our policy itself. Uh, we have very different layers of uh, regional uh, consultation group. We have ASEAN, ASEAN plus one, with you know, each uh, uh, 
from Beijing, Tokyo, and Seoul. And also we have uh, uh, East Asian Summit. And also we have APEC too. So in other words, we have a very uh, strong layers of very different uh, uh, regional uh, consultation group involving Russia, China, United States, and also our friends in Latin America. So no one is saying that we are very exclusive and we need to be able to sort of focus on our region too. I mean, each nation in ASEAN group, as well as Northeast Asia, we are what I see as a very porous. You know, though we are very, our identity is very much uh, toward globalization, mm -hmm. cosmopolitanism, because at the end of the day, we are all trading nations. Uh, by definition, when you are trading nations, you need to be able to engage with the rest of the world. So uh, openness that uh, 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 Indo-Pacific strategy is, is striving for, you know, we uh, uh, always welcome their initiatives and trying to find out key points. Uh, that's our uh, uh, ASEAN Bureau people are always working on. Well, I think that was uh, very eloquent, th wonderfully put. Uh, thank you so much for a um, for not dodging any questions and for your um, comprehensive thoughts. I mm. thank you so much for your time today, uh, Vice Foreign Minister Choi Jung Gun. Uh, thank you for your news special. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. And that wraps up our news special for tonight. Thank you everyone for watching. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe and stay warm.